Welcome to the UIAAA Connection Podcast. Hometown Ticketing is proud to be the exclusive sponsor of the UIAAA Connection Podcast and to provide schools nationwide with the best options for digital ticketing for their events. Visit their website at hometownticketing.com to learn how they can make digital ticketing possible and simple at your school. Thank you to Hometown Ticketing for their exclusive sponsorship of the UIAAA Connection Podcast. Welcome back to another edition of the UIAAA Connection. I'm your host, Mark Hutch Hunter. Today we have as our special guest, Nate Larson, Certified Master Athletic Administrator, the State Coordinator from the state of Nebraska. Nate, thanks so much for being on the podcast today. Appreciate you having me, Hutch. Let's have you begin by sharing where you grew up, where you went to college, your first job, et cetera. Yeah, um, grew up in Lincoln, Nebraska, uh, and I had the good fortune of uh, following my dad around. Dad was a, a teacher and a coach, so, I mean, if there was something I could be a water boy or a ball boy for growing up, uh, I was there. Uh, so I got to be surrounded by uh, a lot of lot of great coaches, um, you know, when I was a little kid. Um you know, knew from from the get go that Lincoln Southeast High School was where I was going to be. Uh, I, I I bled black and gold growing up. Uh, <clears throat> went to Lincoln Southeast, uh, uh, and it was a great place to go to school. I was uh, I was able to play football there. Um, and un- unfortunately, that's, that's probably about it. When you're when you're five eight and and one hundred eighty pounds at at the the biggest high school in the state of Nebraska at the time. Uh, you know, basketball is not really an option, especially when uh, you're you're not setting any records with your forty time. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, I was able to play football uh, and then be involved in uh, a lot of different intramural uh, sports. Uh, one of the benefits of of having a school that size. Um, and then I went to University of Nebraska Lincoln uh, for college. Uh, I like to say I was I was there when. Uh, the team that I still consider to be the greatest college football team in in the history of the sport was was playing the '95 uh, Huskers were were my freshman year. I want to say I spent seventy two dollars on season tickets in the in the student section for that year. Wow! <laughs> you but, can't get those now, can you? Uh, not no, for that price. Not not for that price, and the tickets aren't quite in the same location they used to be at that point oh, either. I don't think. I'm sure. Um, but yeah, I mean that was that was a great time to be at at UNL. You know, there were two national championships in in my five years in school, uh, and then from there, uh, my first job was was Auburn, Nebraska, uh, and then uh, just taught uh, and coached for for a total of fourteen years before uh, starting as an athletic administrator. That's perfect. Let me. Uh, I... I need to share this story with you. I think I've probably shared it before and hopefully I haven't shared it with our listeners, but I may have. My son-in-law, as you know, played at Wayne State, which is uh, near where you live. So we go out to see them one year. We leave on a Friday night, stay in Cheyenne or no. uh, Yeah, we stay in Cheyenne, go to check into our hotel before the game in uh, Kearney because they're playing the Lopers. So I go to the front desk and I said to the young lady, I says, can you give me directions to the football stadium? And she gives me this weird look. She said, well, you go out, go to that stoplight, make a U-turn, go down to the interstate and then drive about two and a half hours east and take exit 12 and you'll be there. (laughs) And I said, no, no, I I want to know where the loafers are playing. She says, oh, yeah, it's up here about four blocks that way. But that tells you about the uh, that tells you about the Nebraska mindset when it comes to football. Let's let's have you share for a moment uh, your little league sports or or youth sports growing up. Were you able to play football there? I yeah, think I played uh, you know football, program. basketball, baseball, soccer. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I I remember being seven years old and getting my first set of set of golf clubs for a birthday present. Um, so all those things, all those things growing up were part of part of youth sports. Um, in high school, like I said, it was it was football only as far as uh, interscholastic competition. But 
Um, you know, we had co-ed softball, five on five basketball, uh, floor hockey. Uh, and then we also had, um, we called it spud web basketball that you had to be <laughs> but, yeah. under, you had, you had to be five, eight or under in order five, to, eight or under to play. That's, that's funny. Um, and we, it was three on three and you played at half court. You played, um, one half on a 10 foot hoop and, you know, three pointers were three, everything else was two. Yeah. And then the other half you played on an eight and a half foot hoop and dunks also counted for three points. Also. <laughs> <laughs> that's incredible i'm gonna to have to so, put that in the description the so, spud web league that's yep, funny yep intramural spud web basketball so that was that was pretty fun um and then uh you know like i said uh at, at unl uh, obviously i wasn't wasn't there to play uh sports just get an education uh, and i had the opportunity uh to to start out coaching uh, at the school that i had went to with with a lot of the guys that I had played for. And that kind of got me started uh, in coaching. Well, that's great. Let's, uh, before we get down to how you became the AD, let's talk for a minute about <clears throat> the mentors you had in your life and uh, what a difference they've made to you. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd be remiss if I didn't start with, with my folks. Um, you know, my mom, I only had uh, around for 10 years, but um, just, learned a lot about um, kindness and, and caring uh, and being an empathetic person from her, um, from, from my dad, uh, man, as a, as a teacher and a coach, I learned uh, just a ton from him, uh, preparation, how to interact with different people, um, just the way you carry yourself and treat other people. Um, you know, I, I couldn't ask for, for a better mentor than my dad. Uh, he just retired from coaching a year ago. Uh, and is is the winningest girls basketball coach in the history of the state of Nebraska. Um, has has ten state championships and seven state runner up finishes. Wow. So, I I had a I had a pretty good guy to follow <clears throat> growing up there. Um, and then I was really fortunate. The guys that I played for at Lincoln Southeast um, were were as good as there were. Um, and and to be able to be invited back and be a part of the coaching staff with them for three years while I was finishing college. Um, you know, I'd, I'd, be, I'd be naive if I said that, that on my resume probably didn't help me get my first job that, you know, man, this guy coached with, with them at Lincoln Southeast. Yeah. We want to hire him. Um, you know, so there were a lot of great, great people at Lincoln Southeast and then um, getting, getting into, to my professional life, um, the, the head football coach, Dave Carlson down in Auburn, um, was, was phenomenal to me. Um, just kind of teaching me what it meant, uh, to be able to be a head coach, giving me a lot of ownership, uh, in our program. Uh, I, I owe him an awful lot for that. Uh, and then when I was, when I was teaching and coaching in Aurora, uh, a guy by the name of Randy Hubert, um, was was as good as there is uh, in terms of how you treat uh, the people that you work with and the people that you coach. Uh, I took something from him that I still do to this day. He called it adding value uh, to the people that that were on our team. And he had a roster and his goal was every two weeks, he had to put a check mark by every kid's name on our football roster. And he could only put a check mark there if he had had a conversation with that individual uh, to let them know something specific that that they had done really well lately. Maybe it was on the football field, maybe it was in the hallways at school, but something they had done that he really appreciated uh, about about them or how they acted. And and that's something that I've I've taken with me and used in a lot of different scenarios uh, over the years. Uh, and then getting into the the AD side of things. Um, I was fortunate my first year as an AD, uh, Bill Fitzgerald was my, my mentor, uh, Billy know, his, Fitz. <laughs> his, his school was, was about, about 15 miles down the road from where I'm at now. And, uh, you know, so I was, I was lucky to have, have Bill for a mentor, um, you know, guys like, you know, Mark Armstrong, Mike Purdy, Steve Throne, uh, sure. you know, as, as you're getting started to have those guys kind of help show you how it's supposed to be done. Um, that that's pretty impressive. Um, and then, then once I got going and, and got involved, thanks to a lot of, a uh, lot of advice from those guys, 
you know, I, I get to a national level and I'm fortunate enough to to participate in the cohort. And, you know, so I get to interact with, with Daryl Nance and Jamie mm -hmm. Sheets and Becky Moran and I mean, sure. Mike Nelson. Um, you know, I go to a, I go to a national conference and this, this tall guy named Rich Barton happens to be in the same <laughs> session that I'm in. And, you know, we have a great conversation and have, have, have stayed in touch ever since. Um, you know, so a lot of people that have been, been very, very gracious with, with helping me over the years. That's great. Let me ask you a little personal question here, Nate, what's your biggest failure or disappointment and what did you learn from it? Um, I would go back to, oh, it would have been my, my third year uh, as a head basketball coach. And it was, it was at the conclusion of a game and, and I was, I was pretty disappointed. Uh, I had, I had gone out of my way to do something nice for, for the other coach prior to the game in terms of, of getting some film for them, you know, before, before it was as easy as pushing a button on huddle. Right. <laughs> um, you know, I, uh, and uh, I didn't care for the way the game went and the way that, that that coach conducted themselves. And um, one of my players uh, tore her ACL that game. Uh, so emotionally, I was probably not in a, in a very good spot. And I let my emotions get the better of me at the end of the game. And I, I, I treated that coach in a manner that wasn't very professional um, and, and certainly wasn't something that, that I should have done in front of my players. Uh, and, and that's something that, that I still look back on today and, and say, you know, that's a, that's a really good lesson in, in not reacting out of emotion or right away in the moment uh, and, and taking the time to think and process before you you speak or act. Well, that's uh, that's a tough lesson to learn, and I'm not really smiling, but having coached girls basketball for 10 years, I've been in that situation more than once. So that is that is a great story. So let's get back now to your teaching, I assume here at, let me get it right, you're at Auburn. So you became the AD at Auburn, or was it after you left there? No, um, actually, I was at Auburn for three years, um, and I was uh, the district was shrinking, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we had uh, what they call a reduction in force, and I was the only social studies teacher in the district that had not been there at least seventeen years. I was not yet tenured, um, so you you so, got riff then. So so yeah. I was the one that I was the one that got to leave. Um, we spent, uh, you know, my wife and I then moved to Omaha. Uh, we spent one year uh, living in Omaha. My wife was was working at a bank, and uh, she got robbed at gunpoint. Oh, and oh my, yeah, came home and and said it'd be okay if we moved. <laughs> she she might have used some different terminology, but that was that was yeah. the, that was the gist of the conversation. And uh, so I I had I had worked with uh, a couple of football coaches from Aurora. Uh, at at some lineman camps uh, over the years and saw that they had a teaching job open uh, and, and applied for that and uh, had it not been for for moving into athletic administration I'd still be I'd still be in that classroom teaching today that was a great place to be um, nice community great people hmm. that's great so you're the AD now, and my question to you is, it's 2023, how is the job of athletic administrator different today than it was back when you first got the job? Um, you know, I think um, specifically in our state, we've seen the addition of, of some new sports. Um, you know, bowling uh, has, has become a, a sponsored sport. Uh, girls wrestling is just in its second year. Uh, as a as a sanctioned sport for the state, um, we've seen a tremendous amount of growth in unified sports, um, and then now most recently uh, with probably NIL. Hmm. Let me ask you about girls wrestling because I think this might be the fourth year in Utah, and it's really. I think the uh, wrestling tournaments, a couple of them were last week, a couple of them going to be this weekend, but it's really, I mean, in the bigger classifications, they've got full wrestling teams in each weight for the girls. Some of the girls wrestling teams have got 30 to 40 
members on them. So I'm, I'm interested to know if you've seen that kind of growth in Nebraska, or is it too early to tell? Um, we're definitely growing in that direction. Uh, if you look at, uh, it was it was an emerging sport uh, four years ago, uh, and it went from an emerging sport to a, an officially sanctioned sport two years ago. Uh, and then with this, the second year, uh, they've expanded from 12 to 14 weight classes. Um, so girls wrestling, uh, obviously the, the numbers are different, but the amount of weight classes are the same as, as boys wrestling now. Uh, I think there's somewhere in the neighborhood of 40 new schools uh, adding teams for next season. So, yeah, I, I think we're seeing some some very significant growth and uh, probably only two, maybe a third year away from from splitting into a single classification to two different classifications for the girls side of things. Um, you know, as, as it becomes more and more common, we're seeing youth clubs start to have more girls participating and, and that'll just filter up through junior high and into high school. Excellent. Let me ask you about your time serving on the NSIAAA, the Nebraska State Interscholastic Athletic Administrators Association. I should have mentioned, I failed to mention there, you are the president elect of that group. So talk about how you became involved in that and your path that took you to be, I guess, president next year. Um, yeah, well, and again, that that's a lot of credit to Bill Fitzgerald. Um, you know, my first year, he did a great job um, making sure I knew about LTI courses and making sure that I was planning to go to the state conference to to basically see what what our association's about uh, and how it can help me get better uh, at, at what I'm going to have to do every day. And, uh, you know, it was it was a great experience. And then uh, that spring, uh, the state association was looking for people to to be a part of the strategic plan update. Uh, so I volunteered to be a part of that. Mm -hmm. um, a few years later, uh, the opportunity to run for a district representative position uh, came open. So I did that, uh, and I was fortunate enough to be selected as as the District 2 representative. Uh, I served in that spot for, for four years, um, finished uh, the last year of a term of somebody that retired, and then, then uh, a full three-year term of my own. And uh, at that point, um, Kevin Zimmerman decided to, to go to Kansas. Uh, so the, the LTI coordinator uh, position was available. Uh, and uh, thanks to the help of, of he and Mark Armstrong before that, I had taught quite a few classes at the state level, um, and, I, and that was something that had interested me, um, so I was, I was chosen for that position, uh, and, and at the same time um, decided that uh, I, I wanted to, to do a little bit more uh, in terms of the state association, and I I ran for the vice president position and, and was, was elected to that. Um, so that's uh, here in March. I will start my my third year of that four-year cycle uh, where mm -hmm. I'll take over as, as, as president. Um, and then one more year after that as past president before I'll, I'll roll off our executive board. Excellent. You mentioned state coordinator. So let me ask you a follow-up about being a state coordinator. Talk about the... I know it's hard work, and I, I think everyone out there knows it's hard work, but talk about the blessings that come, particularly from meeting other state coordinators and that time you spend at the state coordinator summit in September. I've had two or three people in Utah tell me, oh, well, yeah, you go back there and you just get the weekend off, and I don't think they understand that you maybe get two hours Sunday night <laughs> to 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 be with some other ADs. Other than that, you are packed with me, uh, meetings beginning uh, what Saturday at, uh, at probably 12 now until you leave uh, Monday at 12. So talk about the, uh, the great thing it is and some stories from being a state coordinator. Yeah. Um, well, the, the state coordinators convention is phenomenal because you get, you get to pilot uh, some of those new classes. You get to see the, the, the great things that people have come up with that are that are working their way through the pipeline to being offered at, at the next national conference. Um, you know, you get to you get to see what other people are doing to help uh, increase certification numbers uh, in their states, you know, talking with uh, Illinois in particular, you know, they've started a, a cohort uh, for certification where they're kind of walking people through the steps together. 
um, you know, and they're they're taking advantage of, uh, of of the Zoom platform for a lot of teaching within that cohort. Um, mm-hmm. You know, they're they're allowing people to also you know take some webinars, but but there's a, a collective accountability there uh, as as people are all working towards their certification together. So that's something that that I'm looking at uh, at, at borrowing and and bringing to Nebraska because you know I, I I like that idea. I think that's that's something where if you know there's someone else going through the same stuff with you, um, you know, that creates that network and that resource that you can always fall back on. Um, you know, looking at what Section 1 did for years with their summer institute, um, you know, I've gotten a chance to visit with with Pete Shambo quite a bit, and now Mike McGurk and I are, are working on, um, you know, with, with all of our other state coordinators uh, from Section 5, uh, offering a, a summer LTI Institute in Omaha this summer, uh, kind of piggybacking on our Section 5 meetings. So um, we're we're hoping that goes well. Omaha may not quite be the, the tourist destination that Cape Cod is, but, you know, we're, we're working on it. Hey, you just fly into Ampli Airfield, you go by the Omaha Steak counter on the way out, and you're there. That's exactly and- right. You can Can't tell, go wrong uh, with Omaha Steaks. You, you, can, you can tell McGurk that... Uh, that you and I have talked and that uh, his school district is going to cover my flight since I'm familiar with Epley Airfield, been out there <laughs> quite a few times and, and that I will be attending and helping you teach that to see how that goes over with McGurk. Fair enough. Absolutely. And tell then him, tell him Josh might have to drive from down in Springfield just to make it work, but, but the MI AAA will, will take care of it if his district doesn't. <laughs> absolutely. That's uh, and of course, uh, along those lines, looking forward to meeting your wife. I had no idea she got held up at gunpoint. Yeah, uh, because I'm 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 excited to to get there and uh, and attend the book club. Hopefully, my book will be on the list by then. That, that, so I'm I'll, working I'll on have, it. I'll have something to share with the other women. I said uh, <laughs> they'll ask me about my book, and I'll ask your wife. I know we joke about it, but that had to be somewhat traumatic. It it certainly was. I mean, it certainly. I would was. think, even though it's probably been years ago, I'm sure it's probably traumatic to think back on. Although she she can laugh at it now, but I'm sure she wasn't laughing then. She it, it was it was not a comical conversation that evening. I can tell you that. All right. Well, perfect. Yeah. Yeah. So you give that message to McGurk, and if he can't handle it, you tell he and Josh Scott can handle it between the two of them. Because Fair uh, well, it's. It's 13 and a half hours straight from Salt Lake City to uh, to Omaha, and that's a little bit lengthy for the car. So you tell them I'd rather take the flight. We'll see how that goes. <laughs> I can do that. Absolutely. All right. So on to my next question. I want you to talk for a minute about uh, working with the Nebraska legends, at least the ones that I know, the ones that I worked with. And if you've mentioned a couple of them already, um, of course, that would be Army, who is a... Uh, uh, vice chair on the awards committee with me, Billy Fitz, who obviously took over for Purdy, you know, Steve Throne and yourself. That's kind of the Nebraska guys that I know. So any stories about them or, or talk what it's like serving with some of those legends? Well, hearing, hearing my name brought up in that group as, as the people you know, I feel like it's one of these things is not like the other things. <laughs> uh, <laughs> But, uh, you know, Army was great. My first year uh, as an AD was um, he was just at that national conference uh, rolling into the presidency position on the national board. Mm -hmm. Uh, So I had the great fortune of uh, he was still on our state board at the time, too. So getting to interact with Mark a lot and just, I mean, seeing the way that that he handled himself and and I mean, everything had a purpose and how driven and, and goal oriented that he was, um, you know, there, there wasn't wasted motion. If he was doing something, there was a purpose to it. Um, and he was so incredibly welcoming, um, you know, for me after a year helping me, um, to get, to get 790 taken so I could be involved, uh, as a, as a faculty member at the state level, um, Mark was phenomenal in that regard. Um, <clears throat> and Billy Fitz, like I said, as, as, as my mentor, uh, he was the guy that just showed me the ropes. Um, you know, these are the things you need to do. Uh, make sure you're, you're getting this taken care of. You're getting this taken care of. Um, 
you know, basically making sure I, I wasn't going to make any of those typical first year mistakes um, that, that an AD made, um, you know, Throny, um, man, you talk about a personality and, and not just because you can't miss him when he's in the room. <laughs> you but, can't miss him. <laughs> but but um, I'm mean, just, you're not going to find a better guy out there uh, than, than Steve Throne. Um, somebody that, that just works their tail off and is genuinely excited um, for the success of the people around them. Uh, you're not going to find better than, than him. Um, and, and all those guys um, have, have helped me, you know, like I said, with Mark, with, with getting involved in the instructional faculty uh, at the state level. And, and then that's kind of what got me started to, to the road of being a state coordinator uh, and, and now being able to serve on a national faculty for a course. Um, Billy Fitz and and Steve Throne, just as far as getting involved at the state level, um, and and I, you know, I was able to uh, as Throney took a spot on the national board, I was kind of able to to step into the spot that he was filling on the credentials committee. Um, all those guys have been just just great in terms of um, helping me uh, find opportunities to to be involved and make a difference. Perfect. Let me. Uh, let me ask you a question that's not on the list that I sent you. You're currently at Logan View High School. So talk about your time there, because I know what here in, in four or five months, you're moving to a new school. So I wanted to give you a chance to talk about both those schools. Yeah, um, I'm, at, I'm at Logan View. I'm just uh, just towards the end of my ninth year um, here. Uh, it's an opportunity. Um, you know, the, the door opened um, for me to to get into athletic administration here. Um, it's an area that I was familiar with. I uh, had some good college friends from from this area, so I was familiar with the school, um, and and it's been a great place to to be, and and have my kids go to school uh, for the last nine years. I'm awfully proud of of the coaching staff that we've put together here. Um, and then starting next school year, I will be uh, the athletic administrator at O'Neill High School. Um, that's in in the north central part of the state. Uh, it's about two and a half hours from where I am now. Uh, it's a little so bit. So let me let me clarify for those of us that are Nebraska geographically challenged. So Logan View right now is, and you got to remember. So I'm I'm saying it's south of Wayne. Is that correct? Yeah, Logan View is south and and a decent amount east of Wayne. Okay, and it's closer to. Um, oh, I'm trying to think of the. Uh, it's not that far from Omaha then, right? Yeah, I'm it's about it's about 35 miles northwest of Omaha. Okay, so it's and I think I may have <laughs> I think I may have driven through Logan View on many the many trips I made to Wayne. And so O'Neill, as I understand it, is yeah, it's gotta be at least two hours west of Wayne, so really north central. Yeah, it's um probably about an hour and a half from from Wayne to O'Neill. Okay, so sorry to interrupt. I just had to get it straight oh, in my no, mind. You're fine. And um, so you're you're just uh, you got the offer, O'Neill, and you're going to take it. So continue. Yeah, it uh, it's an opportunity to be um, an athletic administrator with without the assistant principal responsibilities. Uh, it's a it's a larger school than where I'm at now, um, and and it's a great community. Um, I've been really really impressed with with the people throughout the entire process. So. So my family and I are are excited to to get moved and be a part of the community and and start something new in O'Neill. Oh, that's perfect. Let me ask you this, Nate. What's one common myth about being an athletic director that you'd like to debunk? Um, you know, the number of times people come up and and talk to me about like just the logistical managerial side of things. Well, you know, you're you're scheduling this or you're setting this up, and you know. They have, that, that that's the, the main part of the job. And, uh, you know, I, I'm not, I'm not telling you anything you don't know when, <laughs> when I say, man, this job is about people. Um, right. The, the people in the community that, that you get to interact with every time you're hosting something, um, you know, the coaches and the kids that you get to work with on a daily basis. We have a pickup, a Chevy pickup. <laughs> Sorry. Here we got to go. <laughs> Please. Totally understandable. Like 5 4 8 r It's 
the blue Chevy Duramax pickup. Glad that's not me. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about what's the favorite part of your job, Nate. Um, man, I absolutely love getting to see uh, the kids kids compete in in something they love. Um, you know, whether it's it's one act play or, or speech or athletics, um, you know, I just love being able to go to all those things and and call that work. Yeah. Yeah. I hear you. There's there's no question. There's nothing about having that connection with the kids. I, I understand that. Let's finish up with a couple of questions. The first one being you've got two suggestions for a brand new athletic director. In order for them to be successful, they'll need to follow your two suggestions. And so I want to know from your point of view, what two things does a new AD need? Yeah, um, build a network. Um, whether we're talking about using, uh, if your state has a mentoring program, if you know you have ADs uh, that are that are in the the conference that your school's in or just your state association in general from, from the state conference, or if you're fortunate enough to get the opportunity to go to a national conference, uh, build that network, get to know people that when something comes up and you're not 100% sure how to deal with it, you've got people you can call. Um, that to me, uh, you know, we've, we've gone through a, a whole list of names and, you know, my, my first state coordinator summit that you mentioned, I, I felt like an an honorary UI AAA member, thanks to, to <laughs> you and Jamie and Trevor and Rich. There so, you go. I mean, that's that that's the name of the game. Uh, you know, get get those people that you can count on when you've got questions. Uh, you know, when you run into something difficult, you know, you've got people that you can say, "How would you handle this?" You know, if you've gone through it, what did you do? What would you do differently now? Um, take advantage of those resources. That's huge. Um, as a state coordinator, I'm a little biased, but I'm, I'm going to say then take courses. Um, take as many of them as you can. Get your certification uh, because those courses, uh, the things I've learned uh, from them, and again, that contributes to the network that I've got because when you're, when you're sitting there taking those classes with the other people and you get to have those table and group discussions, um, I, I'm a much better AD because of the classes that I've been able to take uh, and the people that I've taken them with. Perfect. Those are great suggestions. Thanks so much for sharing that. Let's finish up with this question, Nate. What questions should I have asked you that I failed to ask? <laughs> um, well, one of them, I'll, I'll go professionally. Um, creative uh, professional development opportunities that that uh, maybe we're doing. Um, one of them, as it relates to to coaches, you know, I, I found that the biggest roadblock for, for my coaches seeking professional development was either cost or, or travel. It's too far away or it's too expensive. Um, so I worked with uh, the individual who, who took over for me as our District 2 representative when, when I took the coordinator position. And uh, this will be our second year of, of hosting a clinic um, at, at his high school, which is just down the road, uh, about 15 miles. Um, we're, we're offering, you know, uh, two different clinic sessions, uh, for various sports. Uh, we're offering a couple keynotes, um, kind of just general leadership types of things. Uh, this year we're adding an LTI course, uh, for ADs in the morning to hopefully involve ADs. And with some of the sessions in the afternoon, we're doing AD round tables as well. Uh, and then we have a social after that. Um, so that's, that's been good for, for providing professional development opportunities for coaches. And, and then on the AD side of things, um, he's, he's no longer in Nebraska now, but Ron Alexander, um, you know, Billy Fitz, Throney, Armstrong, myself, uh, and our, our district three representative, Kayla Fisher, uh, we have started a, a, a Nebraska state cohort. Um, oh, okay. And, uh, and we meet monthly um, you know, just kind of like the the national one does. Um, we've we've tailored our our modules a little bit more to to specifically fit um, you know some things that maybe aren't aren't quite as big picture as some of as some of the national leadership cohort stuff is, um, but but things that'll be beneficial to our Nebraska ads uh, on a pretty regular basis. So those are two things that that we've done that 
that I'm pretty proud of. And then otherwise, I guess I would say just, um, you know, things that, that are done to, to recharge the battery or relax a little bit. Cause, um, you know, we know this, this job is, is a lot of hours. It's a lot of time, a lot of investment, um, and you got to take care of yourself too. Um, and I don't get a call at my office cause I'm not retired yet, but I love the golf course like you do. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I love that. With that, that's going to wrap it up for this edition of the UI AAA Connection. Again, our guest has been Nate Larson, CMAA, and currently at Logueview High School, soon to be at O'Neill High School. Nate, thanks so much for taking the time to be with us today. I appreciate it, Hutch. Thank you. For our listeners, we hope you tune in again next week for another edition of the UI AAA Connection. 